it's your girl Adeola. Now, you guys know that the uh, Nigerian government just celebrated our centenary last week. Yes, yes, the giant of Africa is now 100 years old. Woo I'm so happy, you know. To be honest, I didn't even know we were celebrating anything. I'm sorry. But that was because I was so busy trying to keep up with the death toll, you know, with the Boko Haram killings. At least more than 500 people were killed by Boko Haram last month. Among them were so many students slaughtered in their sleep. So as a human being and as a woman, you get what I'm saying? I'm more concerned about people that are dying and girls that are being abducted than the celebration of uh, something that could wait. You get what I'm saying? I know that they've been planning this for a long time. Yes, we should celebrate our centenary. But what is the essence if thousands of people are money? You get what I'm saying? I mean, I'm sure that many of the presidents who came to Nigeria would postpone the celebration if something like that was going on in their own country. Boko Haram was killing people the whole week that they were celebrating the centenary. What is the sense in that? And uh, I'm not giving you guys an excuse to abuse Mr. President to I beg, hey, so that you don't get in trouble like some governors now. You get what I'm saying? In case you don't know, hey, Mr. President has already made it clear that any governor that fights him, any governor that abuses him or abuses the federal government, that it will affect their states. Listen to this. This is a Mr. President talking. <laughs> he said, I'm wearing boxing gloves. Ah, I'm trying to read. Wearing boxing gloves. Yes, something like that. And I'm jumping into the boxing ring to face Mr. President. Does not help the development of any state. Yes. I don't fit. You know, you can't make this up. <laughs> Please, don't put on boxing gloves to fight my brother. It may affect how much you are getting from the federal... Okay, let me not go into details. By the way, when I saw the list of some of the people honored at that centenary, I was like shocked. I realized that truly corruption is greatly celebrated in Nigeria. And Sonny Abacha, I said, ah, hey. And the Abacha's wife came to collect the award that Jonathan was giving everybody. <laughs> now, what baffles me is that because Professor Wale Soyinka refused to accept his own award. <laughs> and you know, I really expect him for that, which reminds me of when Chinua Achebe said that they should fix Nigeria before trying to give him an award and all that. So because uh, Wale Soyinka refused the so-called award. Now, Abacha's son and daughter, hey, they are insulting the dear professor. I said, ha, ah, ah, yes. First of all, Abacha's daughter, Gumsu, responded to the professor on her Facebook page that someone tells Soyinka that I like his books when I was young, but that is where it ends. Today, I reject his stupid, foolish, and insignificant statement. She said that? Ooh, ooh. No, she did Yes, she did Professor. No vex. Let me handle this, eh? I thought we were done with open letters in Nigeria. I didn't know I would get to read an open letter from Abacha son. Hey, very interesting. You know, you have to read the letter. Just for you guys to see how their reality is totally different from that of us, the ordinary people that lived during the time of Abacha. Ah, I have never seen anyone die in Nigeria. And the whole country would celebrate. Yes, for days. I remember we were on the street. We didn't even go to school. We were just celebrating that Abacha died. That that was how bad it was. I don't think he knew. You get what I'm saying? There was no freedom of speech. He closed down some newspapers. Everything became expensive during Abacha. By the way, uh, crude oil was about $17 during Abacha's time, not $8 that his son wrote in that his open letter. So many facts are not true in that open letter. It's true that Abacha saved about $9 billion in a foreign currency reserve. But at the same time, this man stole more than $4 billion, which his son forgot to include in that open letter. Ah. Four billion dollars, you know what that money would do? People that shouldn't be bold enough to show their faces in public. But because the, this administration is celebrating them, uh, why won't they pick on professor now? Uh? And they're getting away with it. Ah, uh, professor, professor, you get what I'm saying? Meanwhile, the U.S. just seized another $458 million that their father looted in collaboration with two of his sons. That is almost half a billion dollars. So, and yet we are giving them a certificate in honor of Nigeria. What, what kind of nonsense is that, eh? By the way, what happens to that money now that the U.S. seized the money? Because this is not U.S. money. This is the money of Nigerian people. It has to be returned to Nigeria. Although I don't trust the people in power right now in Nigeria if this money is returned. Huh. And speaking of presidents in attendance, hey, I was so shocked when I found out that Barack Obama was not at the centenary celebration in Nigeria with uh, Michelle. I said, ah, how 
is that possible? I mean, how could Nigeria, a whole giant of Africa, turn 100 and Obama would not be there for at least a week? <laughs> Hello? By the way, Kole, did you see the president of Ghana? Eh? What do you mean? The man lives next door. He wasn't there. Ah, uh -uh. what is meaning of that? What about a uh, Kenyatta? Uru Kenyatta of a uh, of a uh, Kenya? Yes, was he there? The, I, 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 what did you, did you, the, you, you guys remember how Nigerian president went all the way to Kenya during their Independence Day? I mean, I'm so happy for my Kenyan friends. How y'all doing? You know, sup y'all? Yes, but uh, you must be kidding me. So they didn't come to our centenary because you know we didn't have any Independence Day celebration. There was no reason for them to come then because we are. We were afraid of Boko Haram, but why didn't they come for our sentinel? Ah, Kenyans. Remember that our president gave a very, very good speech in Kenya last year. Ah, ah, Kenyatta, what is the meaning of that, no? Eh? What can we do as Nigerians for people to respect us so, ah, you know, maybe we should start respecting ourselves. Ah, I think so. I mean, how would people take us seriously if we don't take our own citizens seriously? I mean, how can we say that we're fighting terrorism with everything we have while we're celebrating in the midst of terrorism. You guys know I don't know anything, I beg. Yes, what? I'm just keeping it real. And now, um, speaking of speech, hmm. Did you guys watch uh, the Gambian president? Yeah, yeah, Jame. Hey. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yes, I mean the Gambian boy scout. I mean, uh, man scout. Everybody was talking about his speech. Oh, he got standing ovations, you know, from Nigerians. Call it a whole place, some of it, I beg. If religion is anything to go by, we as Muslims and Christians should understand that in the ultimate kingdom of Allah, that is heaven, only the Almighty Allah will decide who enters heaven. Since our ultimate objective as Allah worshiping Muslims and Christians is to be granted eternal bliss in heaven, we must remember that we have no control over who we want to live with in heaven. You see, you see what I'm saying? Jamey, yeah, yeah, Jamey, <laughs> talking about uh, stop killing the innocent. First of all, first of all, who invited this man to Nigeria? Seriously, are they trying to tell me that they don't know his record? My people, please don't be deceived just because somebody wears white agbada, which some people call bubu, <laughs> just because somebody is wearing white bubu and then he quotes the Quran and talks about living in peace. Anybody can do that. Let me tell you, you just have to learn from Toastmasters. Always do your homework, my people. Apart from the fact that he came in through a coup and he's been in power for 20 years, this man ordered the killing of students during a protest in Gambia in April of 2000. It was all over the news then. This is what happened, okay? One student was beaten to death by firemen. That was 19-year-old Ebrima Bari. And not long after that, a 13-year-old female student was raped right in the stadium during an inter-house sport. So because of these two incidences, students in one city decided to protest in Gambia. And Jermaine ordered soldiers to shoot them in broad daylight. Broad daylight. 14 students were killed that day and a Red Cross volunteer as well as a baby that was hit by a stray bullet. Till today, nobody in Gambia was held accountable for the death of those students because of that. And the following day, students all across Gambia protested. And guess what happened? They arrested hundreds of them and detained them. And then he came to Nigeria talking about living. How dare you? No, seriously, Jermaine, how dare you? I have a lot of issues with this man. In 2005, this man ordered his assassins to kill about 40 Ghanaians who were passing through Gambia. Remember that story? Ghana reported him to the ECOWAS now. At that time, Jermaine's informants told him that those Ghanaians were trying to stage a coup against his government, which doesn't make sense because why would Ghanaians come from their country <laughs> to come and take over power in Gambia? That just doesn't make sense. But instead of him to talk to them and find out why they were in Gambia, this man ordered their killings. Until today, no one has been held accountable for the death of those Ghanaians. And then he came to Nigeria appearing like an angel. What is the meaning of that. Do you know that this man is the one that decides the day for people to celebrate Eid prayers in 
Gambia. Eh, I've had my Gambian Muslim friends telling me that they are forced to celebrate whenever he wants to celebrate. It's not even the imam that would decide. No, no, no. It has to be Jermaine. <laughs> I can't even tell you. And if they don't cooperate with him, he can arrest them. That is what I've been told. I can't even tell you how many journalists this man has killed. Remember Deida Haidara, who was shot dead nine years ago after he was accused of revealing state secrets to the West whatever that means. And then there was Chief Ibrahim Mane who was assassinated and thrown into a well at Jamey's home village in Kanilai. That was like five years ago. And many journalists have fled Gambia because of this man. Hey, one of them is Nana Makeita. You know that sports journalist who revealed all kinds of corruption and fraudulent dealings of the former managing director of the Daily Observer. That is Pa Malik. <laughs> you know, they actually told this journalist that if he doesn't stop talking about corruption, that he would also disappear like a, a Brahma Mane. Do you know that they took that journalist, Nanama, to court? But fortunately for him, he got a fellowship here in the US uh, about the time that they were having a trial in Gambia. And that was how he escaped to another country and made his way to the US. And then don't forget the beautiful TV host of the popular show in Gambia, Fatou Kamara. Yes, she was also arrested right in front of her children. She spent 25 days in prison before they even told her what she was arrested for. And finally, they charged her with trying to tarnish the image of the president. Shoo. She was to face 15 years in prison when she fled to Senegal and then made her way to the US. So, you know, so many Gambian journalists like that are now living in exile because of this man that is trying to appear like an angel in Nigeria. This man even killed his own brother. That is Haruna Jame. <laughs> because that one did not support his government. He killed his own blood brother. And then his aunt, uh, Masi Jermaine, and his distant brother, Jasaja Kujabi. Do you know that some of his assassins are now coming out? Talking about so many people that he has ordered them to kill. Yes, they're not the ones coming forward, revealing so many secrets. It's so funny because after his brother was killed and one of them confessed that they were the ones sent to kill him. Do you know that Jermaine told everybody in his family that it's a lie, that his brother is alive. But till today, he's not been able to produce the live body of that brother. You know, it's been years now and nobody has been arrested. Journalists, human rights activists, civil servants, religious leaders, lawyers, and many other Gambians continue to be killed and tortured by Jermaine's assassin team. You know, they call them the junglers. And even as we speak, you know, the former Gambian chief justice, that is a Nigerian man, no chief um, justice war war, he's serving a two-year mandatory jail term. And recently, the Ghanaian-born chief justice, Mabel Ayema, was also dismissed from office after serving for seven months. I mean, seriously, what is going on? The former Gambian justice minister is also serving many years in the same prison with the justice uh, war war and the former army chief. Yes, above all. Was it not Jermaine who invited our president to Gambia last year when he was poisoned? No, seriously, I'm asking. Some of you don't even know that a Nigerian president, good luck Jonathan, was poisoned in Gambia last year. Food poisoning. Yes, so uh, the case is still in court in case you don't know. They flew Mr. President to UK for immediate medical treatment. You know, he just published two books, you know, A Million Reasons to Leave the Commonwealth. <laughs> yes, and then he published another one, um, How the Tragic Consequences of British looting and misrule in Gambia inspired the founding of the United Nations, you know, claiming that it was the money looted from Gambia that was used to start the United Nations. Abi, the general belief among Gambians, though, is that Jermaine wants the support of the Nigerian government in order for him to be the new ECOWAS chairman that that is why he was trying too hard to impress Nigerians. It's funny that a lot of Nigerians were impressed by his speech, but a lot of Ga Gambians that I spoke with, they were like, oh, this man says one thing, and he does something else. But you guys know that me, I don't know anything. I beg, <laughs> what do I know? All I want to say is, Mr. Jermaine, step down now. Ah, uh -uh, you don't do, step down, 20 years, eh? <laughs> you not do well, just step down, Jermaine, as in seriously, step down. You guys know I don't know anything, I beg. Guess what, I'm just keeping it real. Hey, hello, 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 is that BBC? Hello, hey, hi, my name is Adiola. Oh, okay, okay, I'm, uh, hello, hello, can somebody hear me? Hello, is this CNN? See, mm hmm okay, 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 I'm, I'm on, I'm on hold, ah, hold on. Hey, um, 
allafrica.com hi hi is this all africa.com hi thank you so much for picking my call uh, my name is Adi Olafayo. i'm calling on behalf of the nigerian government yes can you guys stop publishing any negative stories about nigeria you know yes yes really you know like all the reports on boko haram killings what eh 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 what do you mean? Just pretend like it did not happen. You know, we have a lot of uh, positive stories in Nigeria as well. Uh, you know, for example, our president just launched a drone. Uh, yes. Yes, report about that. What do you mean you can't compromise? It's called cooperation, not compromise. Eh? Hold on. He hello? Hold on, please. Hold, hold on. Hold on. CNN, don't, don't drop the phone now. I've been not... Oh, by the way, allafrica.com, thank you guys for posting my shows, you know, on your website. I see it once in a while. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't talk about negative things. No, no, I don't say neg negative things about Nigeria. Uh, uh, I just make people laugh now. Uh, uh, he dropped, he dropped the foot. Call it all this thing is harder than I thought, eh? Only allafrica.com. Look at this long list of people that I still have to call. As you guys can see, I've been so busy. Eh? I haven't slept in like uh, three days, you know? Calling all these uh, foreign, hello, hello, hello. Calling all these foreign media outlets just so that they can stop reporting negative things about Nigeria. Just so that I can save the Nigerian government 300 million naira, eh? <laughs> For those of you that have not been following the news, let me tell you the gist. The Ministry of Information under the leadership of our very own Mr. Labaran Maku. Remember that man now? Huh? <laughs> the one that goes around talking about how wonderful this administration is yes yes <laughs> yes the good governance to all guy yes and the one that advocate for that locomotive i mean hey light rail light rail yes that's man every day boko haram every day boko haram <laughs> you know i said let's report development even in war and we're not in war work is going on marriages are taking place famine is taking place uh uh you don't have to play that video now they know who i'm talking about uh. Your own wala too much. Anyway, as I was saying, his ministry just received approval to spend 300 million naira. That is almost two million dollars on repairing the image of Nigeria in foreign media outlets. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to call those media outlets myself to talk to them. That way, the money that they wanted to use could be used for something else, you know, like fixing the Lagos Ibana Express Road or maybe renovating one of our general hospitals in Nigeria. Wait a minute. Uh, this is the Ministry of Information, right? Yeah, maybe they can spend that money on getting people good internet services. Yes, so that more people can watch, you know, this show in Nigeria. Wouldn't that be nice? All I know is they said that there's a lot of criticism from foreign media about how this government is handling terrorism that is very sad and listen to what they want to spend the money on external publicity yeah um in case you start to see all those uh, posters everywhere you know the one that says great country great people <laughs> i call it the world you are too troublesome is this what i'm talking about change the thing oh jare eh uh, hey, yes, uh, yes. In, I do well. in case you start to see posters like this everywhere, <laughs> it's one of the things they want to be doing with that money. Also, media insertions in foreign media. That means they will start sponsoring positive articles and documentaries about Nigeria on CNN, on Al Jazeera, all those foreign media outlets, eh? <laughs> so that people would forget all the negative things that they've read, especially the Boko Haram killings. Yes, um, let me see, engagement with uh, foreign news agencies uh i don't know what that means production of specialized publicity materials for external audience seriously if they are spending this much money on external media how much would they spend on internal media <laughs> What about those of us that live inside Nigeria that refuse to buy the lies that came out of a good governance store? How much would they spend to convince us? So they said that this 300 million naira is the amount that the information minister needs to respond to this foreign media. I said, why now? Eh? Why? 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 Mr. Labaran, why 300 million just to respond to New York Times? Their office is right here. I can go today and talk to them. Even if you fly all the way from Nigeria to come and visit them at their office and then you go to CNN and BBC because they all have offices here in New York, you won't spend up to two million dollars. What are you trying to do with our money? Eh? What kind of documentary are you trying to make that you will spend almost two million dollars? What kind of articles are you writing? Nigerians, say you see, you see with your koro koro eyes how they are trying to rob us at face value. Eh, Mr. Labaran, don't get me upset, so if not, I will start to say things like, eh, uh, Bara Obansa. I I'm serious, I'm warning you. Don't get me upset. Uh-uh, 
By the way, they can just pay me that money. I can call all these media outlets for them. I'm already doing it for free anyway. I can speak to them. If you give me the money, I will do the job and I will even give you change. Eh? Wait a minute. Ah, uh, what is this now? The group. They must be talking about Boko Haram. The group has killed hundreds of Nigerians almost daily since February in Bornu, Yobe, and Adamawa states, putting the government's tactics at combating it on the spot. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So they know. These people know that Boko Haram has killed hundreds of people almost every day since the beginning of February. What? These people are crazy. No, 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 seriously. That means that uh, CNN is not making it up. BBC is not. Reuters, they are not making it. So, uh, yeah. So instead of trying to stop those ones from reporting the stories that you yourself confirm to be true, uh, uh, why can't you just deal with uh, the problem? Eh? Don't get me wrong, go. I also want to see positive things about Nigeria, you know? I want Nigeria to be that country where everybody wants to visit at least once in their lifetime. No, 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 let me repeat that. At least once in a year. You know, there are some countries that people want to visit <laughs> at least once in a year. Eh? I want Nigeria to become the center of uh, tourism, you know? That people would go for vacation, for good jobs. I want my country to be that country, featured in all magazines, you know, as the most beautiful and safest countries to visit. But you can't make stuff up. You get what I'm saying? There are very beautiful places all over Nigeria now. Yes, but the security is an issue. How many of you watching me avoid traveling at night in Nigeria just because of uh, armed robbers? Eh? Am I lying? Even if you travel in the daytime, how many of you are sure that you won't be attacked by robbers or kidnappers? You know how much we pray in Nigeria before we get on the road? Eh? I know that one should always pray. You get what I'm saying? But I'm saying that the journey prayer, when you are traveling in Nigeria, the journey prayer is different. Ah, Father! You will pray as if you may never come back because many people never came back. Yes, even people who have never been to church when they are traveling, I'm telling you, everybody will start to pray. And not only that, if you if you don't have money in Nigeria, would the doctor treat you? So why is the Nigerian government so concerned about polishing the outside? instead of taking care of the inside. Eh? It's like washing a cup on the outside when the inside is filled with maggots. And you have the boldness to approve 300 million Naira taxpayers' money to spend on this project? What kind of nonsense is this? What about spending that money to improve the lives of those affected by Boko Haram, you know? That would actually get you some kind of positive headline. Hello? People will start reporting about the wonderful things you're doing to help the victims. Other information ministers have tried all kinds of gimmicks, okay? All kinds of projects in the name of rebranding the image of Nigeria. Ah, spending billions of Naira. You think I forgot? There was a um, Heart of Africa, the one that was designed by Frank Mweke, eh? And then there was a uh, Dora Akunili who did uh, a program called uh, Rebranding Africa. You know, what came out of all of that? Eh? What happened with all the money they've been spending to rebrand Nigeria? No, seriously, why should we then keep spending on rebranding instead of taking care of the issues. And um, speaking of a fighting negative image, did you guys hear that Nigeria granted visa to Dr. Abu Amena Phillips? Eh? I'm not saying that the man is a terrorist. And please, don't get me wrong. I honestly don't know too much about him, but there has to be a reason why Kenya. That is an African country, oh, those of you that are saying, eh, we just don't want to follow the West. No, no, no. Kenya banned this man from entering his country. Yeah? So there has to be a reason for Kenya, UK, Germany, and US to ban this man from entering their countries. Again, I'm not saying that he's a terrorist, but preachers like him have been known to radicalize the minds of many terrorists. You know, like our underwear bomber, Farouk Abdul Mutalab. And I bet that we don't need more radicalization in Nigeria right now, do we? I just feel like the Nigerian government should have a better explanation for a lot of people who are worried about why this man was granted a visa than for them to say something like this. Listen to this. This is uh, the Minister of Interior, Mr. Abamoro speaking. Any moment that he's preaching and activities are seen to be inimical to the security of Nigeria, I can assure you that we are up to the task of repatriating him as soon as possible. I'm like, what? What if, what if it's too late by then? What kind of explanation is this? So if you are thinking about possibly deporting the man, why did you grant him visa in the first place? And then they said, I can assure you that the Nigerian security personnel are equal to the task of detecting whose activities are inimical to the situation of this country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Really? 
I mean, yeah, just like you've detected all those people that are sponsoring Boko Haram. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we are not stupid, you know? <laughs> if you feel like bringing this man to Nigeria is not dangerous, you should have better explanations than to tell people, oh, you are ready to deport him anytime trouble starts. What is the meaning of that? That doesn't quell the fear in the minds of many people, especially at this crucial time when terrorists are killing people in huge numbers. Can he wait? Can the man wait? What a shame. Why was I even calling all these people, eh? Wait a minute. Ah, uh, Sahara Reporters. Oh boy, call it. Eh, Sahara Reporters is on the list of the people I'm supposed to call. You want to call Sahara? Hey, this is where I keep it real. I beg, I'm just keeping it real. So did you guys hear that Mugabe's daughter got married? Yes, oh, yes, yes, his only daughter. The one that is well behaved among his children. Yes, I'm sorry, but Mugabe himself says it. Ah, it's not, I'm not the only one that knows now. Eh? Everybody knows in Zimbabwe. You know that uh, her two younger brothers are always in trouble. Ah, and this one, the youngest one, he's always spending all his time on, uh, uh, what do they call it? Computer games, you know, video games. Even his mother said it. And everybody in Zimbabwe knows that. And the other son, hey, this one, you know, trouble. Mm -mm -mm. Too much trouble. He's always partying. Remember when he commanded a whole plane just to go and party with his friends in South Africa? I said, hey, Mugabe doesn't hide it now that those boys are trouble, but he's so proud of the girl whom he has described as reserved, disciplined, and studious. She has a first degree in business administration and accounting, and she graduated with honors from the City University of Hong Kong. And she got her master's degree in banking and finance from the Management Development Institute of Singapore. So to celebrate her wedding for the first time since 1980, Mr. Robert Mugabe opened his mansion to the public. Yes, remember Graceland. I've talked about Graceland before. Oh, oh, that beautiful, beautiful mansion. Yes, that is the place where they had the ceremony. You know that Mugabe hardly, hardly opened his residence to the public. <laughs> and we're talking about 4,000 people in attendance. 4,000 people. Now, while I'm very happy for the girl, her name is Bona, by the way. She was glowing. She's very beautiful, you know. I'm very happy for her. I just can't get past the fact that Mugabe spent six million on that wedding. Ay, 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 six million, six million, six million, six million. Ah. Why does anybody need six million dollars for a wedding in Africa? No, seriously. In a country that is in the middle of an economic crisis and cash squeeze, eh? do you know that there are people in Zimbabwe who have not been paid in like eight months? Eight, eight. Eight months, oh, my people, eight months, and they have family members to take care of. Eh? And I remember telling you that uh, banks were running out of cash in December last year. But the question is, where did Mugabe get this money? Because Mugabe himself was recently asking for foreign urgent food aid for about 2.2 million people in his country. Among them were victims of the recent flood that, according to a uh, local government minister, Ignatius Combo, they require $20 million in aid. And I don't understand why the caterers had to be, you know, flown in all the way from Singapore. I said, ah, did they also bring their pots and cutleries from uh, Singapore? <laughs> so there is nobody in Zimbabwe that could make good food. Ah, and then, and you didn't call Mama Yusuf, you know, at a CMS bus stop in uh, Ekoile, Lagos. Ah, ah, ah. That woman is very good. Anything you want, fufu, ogbana soup, uh, anything you want, you know, and she would make good food for the 4,000 guests with maybe, you know, two. 2 million naira. That is about $12,000. Eh? Even that is too much. This woman is very good. I don't know why they didn't call Mama Yusuf. Ha, next time, Mugabe, let me hook you up. Hey, and you will spend less. By the way, uh, Kolido was uh, telling me about the husband, the groom. <clears throat> you guys know that. Me, I don't like to talk about people. I mean, what is my own? I don't get into people's business. I beg. But he was telling me that that guy is not really a pilot. As he claimed, I said, hey, wait to be your own. Kolido, only you. You know, the guy said he works for Emirates Airline and Kita Airline, but no one knows him there. Ah, that is the problem. You know, I don't like to talk about other people's relationships. I beg, <laughs> that is not me. All I know is that uh, Mugabe could have cut costs, you know, by using wedding planners in Zimbabwe. Why do you have to bring wedding planners all the way from South Africa? And then he flew in caterers from Singapore. Along with that, I'm sure he also flew in his uh, medical doctors from Singapore just to make sure that he stayed alive the whole wedding weekend. <clears throat> yes, uh, yeah, if you get what I mean, yes. The important thing to me is not how much you spend on your wedding. That doesn't prove anything. <laughs> the important thing to me is how much you enjoy your marriage after the wedding is over. Hmm? But uh, guess what? <laughs> I don't know anything. I beg. I'm just keeping it real low.
Welcome to Fossville Luxury Hotel. At Fossville Luxury Hotel, we offer excellent service. Our rooms have all the necessary facilities to make your stay comfortable and memorable. You will also have access to internet service, breakfast, 24 hour power supply, poor air condition, free international calls, free tire pumping service, and free car battery charge. So, what are you waiting for? Quickly visit Fossville Luxury Hotel. We are located as number one at the Nirobar Michele off Rajirazaki Road, First Estate, Amuo, or the First Start League. For more information or reservation, please call us on 080-75-78-7135 or 080-99-90-0601. You can also take advantage of our online ongoing promo at www.forcevhotel.com to make your reservation and payment for your favorite room, which attracts a discount rate. Please note, rooms are reserved based on first come, first serve. Forcevhotel Hotel experience the home of comfort. They come, they come.